Welcome. Uh, this is the first in a series of Microsoft Excel um, tutorials. This one is basically an introduction to Excel and you know maybe a few basic tips. The first thing you'll notice in Excel is it's laid out in columns and rows. Okay, the columns are alphabetic and it goes all the way across um, and it'll continue way past Z, but we'll get into that later. And the rows are numeric. Okay, the easy way to remember is that a column, you know, for example, on a building, stands up. A row, like in a movie theater, as you're looking across it, is horizontal. Okay, one of the things that people tend to have trouble with in Microsoft Excel, at least in my experience in teaching, is understanding the coordinates. You know, for example, this is E9 and H4 and I13. And an easy way to know where you are is to look over here in this cell. But one of the things that I try to explain to people is that these coordinates aren't really as complicated as you make it. Um, if you've ever played the game Battleship, it lay, it's laid out similar to what a spreadsheet is. For example, you know, you have your cruiser here and you say H1. Well, that's row, column H, row 1. Um, H2, H3. This is C5, C2. D5, E5, F5, and G5. So it really is that simple. Um, the other thing is that Excel is useful for a variety of things. One, you know, you can do your payroll, you can keep track of scores, you can keep track of things, but I even use it as a simple database. A lot of people hate that. You know, databases are so much faster, why would you use a spreadsheet? I just really like the interface. It, it just works really easy for me. Um, so for example, let's say I want to keep track of some scores, and I do Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. One of the cool things here is, you know, if I format these, say bold and center, and I want this this to continue across, and I can see this little box that appeared down here, I can click that and grab it over, and you see how it says Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Well, you know, it's kind of strange to start it with Friday, so I'll just go ahead and start Sunday, Monday. And let's just see if this will work for, with two. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay? And so you might want to have student one, student two. Maybe you have 20 students. Three, four, five. I'll just have five students for now. Okay? I'm going to pause for a second so I can fill this table in with some just random numbers. Okay, so basically the other thing that I did here is I changed these so that it wasn't Sunday through, you know, Saturday. I changed it to test one, test two, and then I just copied across. Then I added some just sample data in here. Now, one of the cool things here is let's say I want to do a total over here. I just type total, and you'll see that it bold and centered it, knowing that I had all of the other things up here bold and centered. Now I want to do this plus this plus this plus this plus this obviously so one way to do this is I can type equal sum parentheses and then C4 you see how it indicates over here colon I4 and now it's got this whole thing selected parentheses okay so that student has a total of 626 a quick way to do this, however, if I want to total all of this, is to click this little epsilon button, and it usually selects the right thing. If not, you may have to, you know, tweak it a little bit, and I'll show you that next. Okay, that has that student has 616. And here's a third way to do this: equal sum parentheses, and then just drag what you want to add and then in parentheses. So you see there's several ways to do this. I'm going to do, see here's an example when the epsilon thing was wrong and I will choose which area I want. Try it one more time. Okay, so now I have totals for everything here. Now the other thing that you can do pretty quickly here is if I want to do a total of that column I can. So you know I can do total I can do a total of that column, and I can even drag this over, you know, using what I did before, click that little box and drag across, and now I have a total for each student, for each test. 
Okay. Now the next thing is if I wanted something else like average grade. There are different types of averages. Here we're just going to work with the word average. So I'm going to do equal average and then select all of the scores. Okay. Now if I just do a copy and a paste, you'll see if you look at the formula right here, C4 and then I copied it, but now it says D4. That's because it automatically knew that I jumped to the next column. And if I click here and paste again, paste, 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 and paste, you can, in fact, I can paste again. And what it does now is it gives me my average for every one of those columns. All right, so my average score for test one was 87. If I want to find out what my high score was, now obviously you can look at it if there's only five students, but let's say you have 30 students in six classes. Um, I can do max, and I can do equal max. So my high score, that one was 99. Okay. Minimum, so if I want to find my lowest score, I could just do equal min. Okay, so 75. Okay, so basically now I have my average score, my maximum score, and my minimum score. So that's a good start. It gives you an idea of some of the functions that you can do. Um, you, you know, there are lots of other things you can do, and I, I'm going to continue with other tutorials. Enjoy.